Good morning, YouTubians. Gary of VW Jawbreaker. Well, you're seeing it in the morning. It's not morning, it's night, it's late. Why? Because work's been crazy. So on this episode of uh, crap going on in Jawbreaker's garage, we're going to install a oil temperature sensor in the full flow system on the 1915. Why? Because I need to see how it's running. So let's get to work. All right, YouTubians, here is the oil temp kit that we'll be using. It is an electric kit, which means it's running an electronic sender, not a actual cable back and forth, just a wire for the sender. On my oil flow setup, I'm running 3 8 NTP fittings to half inch barb, which is giving me little restriction as possible. So being a 3 8 NTP to half inch hose, it actually gives me nice full flow. With the sensor, it comes eighth inch, and in the kit you get a couple different size adapters. But I was able to go from the three eighths, or I'm sorry, from the one eighth up to the three eighths. Now the sensor actually sticks down below, and if I thread it in, and granted that's just hand tight, but if you look, it's right there at the top and not restricting the flow. So it will still measure oil temperature without hindering flow. That is the most important thing. So what we're going to do is go ahead and install this T with the fitting over at the oil filter so the oil will come in, pass through, and go back to the engine so I'll be reading exact oil temperature. All right, for safety, we have the car up on jack stands. I have the rear wheel removed for your convenience. Right up there in the back fender well is where the remote oil filter is. Oh, hold on. This line right here will be the, is the output going back to the engine out of the oil filter. So we're going to remove this line, remove that 3 8 to half inch hose barb fitting. We're going to install our T right here, put our barb back on the other end, shorten this line up a little bit so it stays tucked nicely, and then we will move on. Well, the time lapse definitely makes quick work of things, but that's how we're plumbed. And as you saw, we went ahead and cleaned everything down with brake clean just to make sure everything's nice and clean. So if we have a leak, we can see where. You also noticed I was using a Teflon tape. That Teflon tape is yellow and not white. White is regular plumbing. Yellow is rated for gas and oil. Moving on, we need to go ahead and run the wire for the sensor into the car. All right, forgot to hit record again. So I went ahead and ran a number 16 wire, well, started to run, inside of some of this expandable looming. I really like this a lot better than the regular plastic loom. This fully encapsulates the wires, different sizes, different colors, kind of works like the Chinese fingers. You know, it's, it expands quite a bit, works well, but there's the red I've been using on some of the stuff with the engine. This stuff's amazing. Uh, get it on Amazon. This was like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. The red was maybe 12. It's absolutely amazing stuff. I would not recommend getting the 1 8 inch. <laughs> Good luck running about a 16 gauge wire through it, that's about it. If you're going to run at least one or two wires, get the quarter inch. If not, jump up to maybe the half inch or three eighths or something. So I have the 
light set up for us. Wait, hold on. Uh, here's what we did. You can see, there we go. Got the loom, got the sensor hooked up. And I went ahead and wrapped probably two wraps of wire back there, zip tied it out of the way, just that way I have a little extra. Comes through that little piece right there and goes underneath. And let me zoom on in there. Oh, hold on, pivot. I like zip ties. So what I did is I ran it up along that channel. And hold on, there we go. Then I ran it in right there through where your heater would hook up. Now I'm not running heater, so it doesn't really matter. Then it comes out underneath the seat. And because it, the wire is in the loom, I don't have to worry about it getting chafed or punctured or anything like that. It's uh, really safe that way. So we'll go ahead and run the wire up front and I'll bring you back. So there's the wire from underneath the seat. And as you can see, I'm trying to focus for you guys, hold on. You can see I've got the extendable loom on it. So the wire's sitting there. So we poked it through underneath. Oh, hold tight. And that's where it comes out right there where your heater would then connect into your heater channel. But since we're not running heat, that'll be perfect. So we'll just go ahead and run it down along the main loom. Pop, 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 pop. And on up. And on into the car. I'll save you those boring details. Ah, she's been warming up for about uh, 10 minutes now. Oh, let's get down here. Position the light. got no drips everything's good to go let's check the gauge oh. slowly creeping up I just hit it a minute ago and the uh, infrared showed that the lines were right around 90 95 degrees this is showing 100 so we should be close within 5 10 degrees which should be good enough so I think for now that's where we're going to leave it. And that was just baby revs. This thing, it, it's running. It's definitely running. Alright, see my idle's up. Ready? Yeah, go ahead, hit it. Just go. guys let me button up for the night it's getting late and uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not but my stupid pulley still barely clicking a little bit it's driving me insane so 
I think I'm going to shut the car down, work on that for a little bit. So you know what to do. Be kind to others. And we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Be good.